Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Podcast. My name is Duke Turley, President of the Sandstone Group. And I'll tell you what, we are in an energy crisis that is self-imposed by horrible policies. Your vote this November matters. We need to elect people that understand energy, the energy crisis, and what causes those crises. Today, I have absolutely one of the greatest pleasures that I get to do. I get to go visit with different world leaders, energy leaders, and politicians, and I get to visit with Trent Franks. He is the co-founder and chairman, and he's a former congressman, and he's running again. So sit back, put your trade table up, and enjoy my conversation with Congressman Trent Franks. This is really cool. He's got a lot of talent. He's got a lot of experience under his belt, and we need men that will support President Trump. We need those that will support General Flynn out there and those that will support folks like our great Senator Ted Cruz. We need all of these really strong political leaders to get our energy where it needs to be going. And that is the lowest it possibly can in the lowest kilowatt per hour to everyone on the planet. So sit back and enjoy the podcast and look forward to hearing from you on this one. Thanks. Thank you for stopping by the podcast, Trent. Well, you can't imagine how honored I am just to be here. You come highly recommended, Stu. Well, thank you. We have to give Joe a shout out, our our absolutely uh, our friend. He is a top notch guy. I just absolutely love him. And you and I have a few acquaintances and everything else around there. But tell us about you and Liberty and what you've got going on in your background because we have an energy crisis going on around the world right now. And no, we, we need we really people do. with solutions. We really do. And I, I have to say to you, you know, in politics these days, it's kind of hard to be an oil guy. But the truth <laughs> is we, we have about 82% of our world's energy needs for, for machine energy comes from petroleum. And I'm all for alternatives. Stu, I want you to know, I think the market can bring us new technologies and new ways of doing things. And I say, bring it on. But when right. government tries to be the one that puts their thumb on the market, they always mess it up in, invariably. Nuclear energy is the only one right now that we have on the horizon that has a chance of being right. able to replace, just in terms of the physics of it all, uh, oil and gas. And I think that that will be an eventuality. The problem is the same people that you know hate uh, fossil fuels, they call it, uh, also hate nuclear energy. And they would have us, unfortunately, yep. in, in, the, in the dark ages, without lights. And, and I, I will tell you, we get any greener, we're going to go completely black. And the, the reality <laughs> is that uh, it's going to take a certain effort on the part of all of us to be able to create, uh, to find the energy sources necessary to drive this economy, necessary to maintain us as the, the world leader economically and otherwise. And I, I just pray that we do so based on reality and not some sort of left-wing lunatic fantasy. Physics and fiscal responsibility matter to the grid. Well, they do. Albert Einstein said, you know, that ethical axioms are found and tested not so different than scientific axiom. That which stands the test of experience or experiment is the truth. Reality prevails in both arenas. Uh, and, and it usually catches up to us. Now, you it always does. You know, and, and I have to admit, my my granddad was one of the key folks that discovered, in fact, the one of the main guys that discovered the North Slope in Alaska. Yeah, yeah. And my first memory is on a dairy farm. And, and huh. so I come from the farmer oil kind of thing. And oil hands are fantastic. They're the cowboys. They keep the lights on. When you look at how much... A clean electricity is generated is by natural gas and oil. You can't make an iPhone out of a windmill. No, no, you can't. And I, I mean, we, as always, have been the innovators of the world. Even our constitution has the patent a construct, you know, for people to make money in a special way to incentivize their ideas and new inventions. And it has been a stunning thing. You know, I, look, I, I always get tickled, you know, when the, 
when the telephone was invented, eventually government got control of that. And we had Ma Bell and long right. distance was $3 a minute. And, you know, the operator got snotty with you every time you asked her what time it was. And, and so it was just a very difficult challenge. But then someone came along and people like me, I was the youngest person in the state legislature here at the time when I was, I, I ran when I was 26, which has been more than wow. a decade ago, more than a decade ago. And, and we voted to deregulate the telephony. And all of a sudden there was this burst of incredible energy in the entrepreneurial spirit. And we came up with cell phones and I saw a homeless person carrying a cell phone the other day and long distance is too cheap to measure now. So the point is, and you can look up the library of Congress on the thing. So the, 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 the enormous leap forward when we turn the American people's ingenuitive capability loose, it's just stunning. And I, I, I wish we didn't have to keep learning that lesson over and over again and the right. failure of socialism over and over again. You know, I had the pleasure of visiting with uh, Senator Cruz a couple of weeks ago, and yeah. uh, he's coming back on my podcast. I'm working with his staff to try to get him rolling in. And I love the way that he would phrase when Texas has its energy independence, so does the U.S. I mean, right. he is a sharp, sharp man. And I just really respect your opinions and his as well. Well, let me tell you my opinion of Ted Cruz. Uh, it couldn't be higher. I think he is a great man. I think it's vital for America that he be reelected as a U.S. senator. He's not only brilliant, but he's got a heart. He's got, you know, he and I share a common faith. And I just think that he is the kind of senator that uh, we would all dream of having. And uh, I, I can't express to you enough how I've had the chance to work with him on a number of occasions. I served, I don't know how many years in Congress with him, but a long time. I think I think I got there before he did. So we 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 were there together a long time. And I just uh, again, without trying to, to to sound like a sinker fan or something like that, I just think he is the greatest. Uh, I loved Senator Cruz. His response by getting trolled by all the folks, the anti-Israel folks. He's yeah. getting trolled, and he's standing up for our allies. And as a member of Congress, yeah, you know, if I, I, you need to be reelected, sir. We need you in Congress. How do we get there? Well, I appreciate that. And speaking of Israel, you know, I had the privilege of being the chairman of the Israel Caucus and also the chairman of the Missile Defense Caucus. And those two things came together yes. on behalf of Israel in a significant way. And we were able to take a lot of support that, in the Congress for Israel and the kind of the nice. interconnection between our military capability and theirs. And what people don't realize in our support for the military of Israel and, and the inner workings that we have with our own defense capability, Israel's done more for America than we've done for them. Uh, I was a big supporter, worked very wow. hard, took the budget hostage once to make sure that this, this funding of missile defense occurred. And Israel, when they really advanced their Iron Dome system, they demonstrated, I was chairman of the Missile Defense Caucus, and they demonstrated this so effectively that the membership of that caucus went from 17 to 36 overnight when they demonstrated the capability of Iron Dome. And it really wow. gave the world a picture of why it's important to be able to stop missiles. And it's especially important when they're not Garad or Katusha rockets, when they're incoming ICBMs that may have a 100 kiloton warhead on board. That, that changes right. things, because I will say to you, and I don't mean to say it in a, in a flippant way, but 100 kiloton warhead landing in your backyard and detonating can ruin your whole day. And oh. it is it is something that we need to pay attention to. So I just think that if we fail Israel, we not only fail ourselves, not only fail a valid and and, and valiant ally is really the word I right. should, should have said, but we well, fail come. ourselves. We fail future generations. And I think that the idea that the Biden administration has stepped back and and Tepidly supported Israel is a disgrace beyond my ability to articulate. You know, we need more upstanding non-rhinos in Congress. I am, I'm going to be honest, I'm frustrated with all of Congress. There mm -hmm. are, there are those like Senator Cruz. I am and Congressman Ogles and several others that I've had the pleasure of interviewing and following and I get excited. I want to hug you. I, I'm sorry. We're even, we're doing this via zoom, but next time 
we can do this live. Yes, sir. I am excited that you're taking this going forward because you're chairman on a, a big company. You've got how many thousands of acres under lease? Well, we got a, a lot of acreage, but you know, I would say fortunately and for unfortunately, it's in Australia. I wish it could be here in America, but unfortunately we have made drilling in America so difficult. America has some of the largest natural gas reserves in the world. We could be completely energy independent. Gasoline at the pump could be a third of what it is now. And we could have an economic boon of unimaginable dimension. And yet, because we don't do what's necessary to be able to, to not only expose, but to use our own energy supplies, we are dependent on countries, in some cases, that hate us for our energy right. supply. And it's just not necessary. I mean, there are so many clean and effective ways to, to gain our energy. I literally believe that we have more pollution issues because we import so much of our oil, because of all the mechanism we have to do to do that. And we, if we do it in here, we, we absolutely reduce pollution and everything else. And, and there's very few things that are less polluting now than clean natural gas. I mean, if we were running, running our, our cars on CNG, compressed natural gas, it would be in terms of physics, in terms of the pollution, in terms of the economy, everything. It would be a magnificent boon. Safety, a magnificent boon to America. I, where did where did we go wrong? Because CNG cars were starting to come along. And yeah. we have the Marcellus up there with Nick Dolius up at the, he's the CEO of CNX. And they've, I mean, we have the Haynesville. We're exporting LNG everywhere. Oh, then the Bidens put the, you know, the ban on, on LNG. And a tanker of LNG is less CO2 output than burning coal in Asia. So let's no sell our it. great LNG around the world. No doubt about it. I mean, L a CNG, not just for the, not to get yep. too esoteric, but you know, the, the audience may not know CNG is compressed natural gas. LNG is for liquefied cars, natural right. gas. And LNG has to be cryogenically condensed and put on ships to be able right. to, to, to move it around because it's very, very cold. And, but the, the CNG in terms of it being able to be for, for regular for cars. cars, it's a little different, a little more difficult with the big trucks, but we we're getting that dialed in as well. And if we let that technology go forward, it puts out about 5% of the pollution of a gasoline-powered car exactly. if it is calibrated just for the, the CNG and not being a hybrid. And Congressman Franks, thank you for pointing that out. And, and the cool thing I love about it is you can take the diesel technology and the engines and that technology and car engines can work in tandem so we have a energy transition that actually works as opposed to forcing us to electrification of cars and forcing the system down. Well, you're exactly seem. right. You know, they, they tell us we have to turn down our thermostat a degree in the summertime, but then they want us to power the entire transportation system with the electric grid. And if people understand, again, physics, the difference there of if we have to put our entire trans, about 80 percent of our oil and gas needs go to transportation. It is an enormous mechanism that requires profound amounts of energy. And to try to put that on the grid right now, preposterous is a word that comes to my mind. I, you know, you're a breath of fresh air, sir. And I, I, I just am really, really excited how do people donate and how do people get uh, get a hold of you and, and try to find out where you are going? Well, I mean, the fastest way is just to go. It's a real complicated website, TrentFranks.com. If they can go to TrentFranks.com, they, they'll find enough to convict me or exonerate me, one of the two. And they, they'll find everything that they need, depending on what their persuasion is. I was, you know, rated most conservative member of Congress, which is not an easy thing to do. I don't say that out of arrogance. I say that because, you know, sometimes we we have to be to be very direct and open. You know, our faith informs our politics. Some people say you right. can't mix the two. I'm s suggesting in many ways you can't extricate the two because what we believe about our fellow human beings, if they're just intelligent animals and it's just all a Sumerian night of, of the right. survival of the fittest uh, and that, the, you know, the prevailing over humanity, then then we take a different view of socialism and a different view of almost every issue. But if we believe our fellow human beings are, are created of God 
and they're our brothers and sisters, and that we have a, a profound eternal purpose and uh, destiny, then all of a sudden we have a little different attitude toward each other, and our entire policy toward one another is transformed. And I'm just convinced that, uh, you know, that that drives the underlying tectonic plates of the political reality that we have. You know, with your experience with the Iron Dome, precur precursor of the Iron Dome, the the, the group and the, the missile group, what did you call that? That was the... It's a uh, Missile Defense Caucus. Yes, sir. The, uh, and... And then you take a look at our great folks like General Flynn. I'm, yeah. I'm, I have a feeling General Flynn will be in some form of the Trump White White House coalition there. And I'm, I would love to see him as either Vice President or Secretary of Defense or anything that we need. That man is a great man. And uh, he, he is a great man. I, I don't mean to, to, to spout all of these positive little emanations because I just said all the things about Ted Cruz, which I believed in every syllable. But I will right. also tell you that General Flynn is a personal friend. He is a great conservative patriot. He is committed to this country. He would die for this country. He put himself at risk for this country. He did. Uh, you know, and so I just have to tell you that I once again believe he is a great person. And I completely agree with you. He should be part of the incoming Trump administration, which I predict is going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen with Biden. I don't know whether he's going to be their nominee or not. It's just becoming difficult because if the Democrats have any intellect at all, they're going to realize that he is probably going to lead them to ignominious defeat. And my fear is if we're not careful as Republicans, we're just going to keep pounding on that and we're going to figure out a way to get them to do the the bait and switch at the last minute, and God knows what they will get. But whoever that person is, if they replace Biden, right, they will be heralded by the media as the greatest statesman to ever step foot on dry ground. And unfortunately, that may deceive the country again, like they did with Joe Biden. We have such a, a unique time that men can no longer stand on the sidelines. So we have to stand up and be leaders in our home. I highly recommend that everyone be prepared, have a 72 hour bag, have a two month plan, have a three month plan. Our grid is completely unstable because of our current administration's policies with the open border. Uh, you and I chat chit chatted before the, the, the show that, uh, President Biden allowed the 30 major grid in Chinese made interconnects back into the grid that can now remotely controlled by the Chinese and shut down. This is all public information and it's frightening, but nobody's really scared about it. Well, it really is. And it's ironic. And I, I know you didn't plan on it, but you may not know that I was the, the sponsor of the the Critical Infrastructure Protection Act. I was kind of the EMP guy no way. in the Congress. Yes, I was. Uh, uh, you know, Senator Ron Johnson in the Senate and, and Trent in the House. And uh, so I was kind of the, e uh, the EMP expert in the, in the Congress. No and way. Ron has done a great job. You know, somehow he survived without me. But we were able to pass that, that bill, which I sponsored, authored and sponsored. And it was a very, wow. very significant piece of legislation. We had to attach it to the the National Defense Authorization Bill, because the Democrats were filibustering in the Senate, of course, anything that will right. protect America, it seems like they're consistently against. But the, the effect was something that really ended up helping protect our, our Pentagon, for protecting NORAD, protecting our, our bases out in, in California for our missile defense capability. There's a lot of things that occurred because of that. It's a slow wow. going thing, but the Democrat presidents have simply ignored the legislation like they do border control. Now, I don't mean to shift gears, you know, do a border shift here on you, Stu, but the border would be secure right now if we had a different president, if we had Donald Absolutely. Trump. When I, was, when I was in the in the Congress, I had and, and, and uh, sponsored the, the border control bill, the build the border wall, and Trump enforced that law and it was secure. Unfortunately, when Joe Biden came in, it went to hell in the handbasket. That's the problem with the border, not the law. And it's TrentFranks.com, correct? Yes, sir. It's TrentFranks.com. Uh, and so I do love that. And again, I believe it's TrentFranks.com. Donate and come and, and sign up for your newsletters and get updates from you. Is We've got about two more minutes here, sir. I want this to be our first podcast together. 
because I want more updates. If you have updates that you want, I want to get your story out there, much like I want to be espousing for General Flynn and his movie, President Trump, anybody that is America first and uh, humanity and Christian and standing up for others' rights, I'm here. And again, you've got about two more minutes here. What are your last thoughts here? Well, you know, just that I like you, Stu, I love America very much. I believe America is God's gift to the whole world. And a great statesman named Daniel Webster said, hold on, my friends, to the Constitution and the republic for which it stands. For miracles do not cluster. And what has happened once in 6,000 years may never happen again. So hold on to the Constitution. For if the Constitution should fail, there will be anarchy throughout the world. I believe that to be true. Wow. I believe that this is the time that we have to try to save our country. I would not have come out of retirement. I have 15-year-old twins that I love beyond my ability to ever exp express. But I want for their future, like Reagan said, I don't want to have to explain in my sunset years what it was like once in America when men were free. And so I'm going to do the best I can and leave the choice to the voters. Uh, my election is the 30th of July. That's about five and a half weeks from now. And so I hope wow. people will go to, to look at uh, TrentFranks.com and do whatever God tells you. You know, I'll, I'll be happy with that. Well, I tell you what, thank you again so much. And that is TrentFranks.com. And I'm on it right now. So thank you again for stopping by the podcast. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take care, Stu.